idle rumours, isn't oh, it, of gosh. gossiping? <laughs> yeah, but you were all you were all out on the town. Is that is that right? It's not the kind of behaviour I expect from Jack, you. Jack went on a mad one. No, I didn't. One of <laughs> one of the team was leaving, and so we went out for a glass. And in my case, it was literally a, it glass, was a glass, a glass. large tumbler. I don't I don't drink. You see, so I I had a couple of sips, and for me, that was my sort of yearly quota. Well, you don't serve <laughs> wine in a in a tumbler normally. That's all I'd say. Well, he also stepped to the side standards, and, and kind know. of. It jumped out the cup, so I don't think you even had a full glass well, because. Yeah, it I hit mean, you know me. I'm a little bit theatrical every now little and then, bit. and uh, I got quite into the dialogue and forgot that there was a, a cup of of liquid in my hand. So anyway, we're uh, just getting into the confessional <laughs> vibe. Yours is pretty mild and inoffensive, <laughs> one as opposed yeah. to this one, which comes from Jezza. So Jezza, thank Jezza. you very much. Yes, thank you very much for this uh, confession. Now, if you have a confession, it would be lovely to hear from you. Uh, confessions at scarlaradio.co.uk in the booth we have judge jody we have judge mark and judge jack uh, and all i'm saying is if you are at the moment cooking or indulging in any kind of food you might just want to put it down and step oh, away no. i like these ones looking forward to it already <laughs> <laughs> okay jezza says simon perhaps your team might consider whether i can get forgiveness for this back in the early 80s I worked for a large national company when we were sent to Oxford for a course on the up-and-coming computer systems that we were going to be using in the future. There were many of us on this course, including my boss, who had a brand new car that he'd driven up to Oxford in. Len was very proud of this car, the first that he'd ever bought from new, and it was some sort of Ford gear thing. So it was fast, comfortable, and not cheap, and it was his and his wife's pride and joy. You really know it's not going to emerge very well from this story, this particular <laughs> Ford Kia. <laughs> well, the course went well, intense but fun, and being all blokes together, and it being the early 80s, the evenings were mainly alcohol fueled. On the last note, so exactly, the well, exactly I kind of evening note. Jack, Jack all over again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On the, water. <laughs> on the last night, we all decided to go to Burford in the evening, a bit of a drive away, so a minibus was laid on for the journey. Len, though, wanted to show off his car, so elected to drive some of us to Burford as well. Burford in those days was a pretty little place, basically a single road that went down to the river Windrush at the bottom. But the joy of the place, joy of the road was that there were loads of pubs, some proper pubs, some just small and cosy watering holes. The plan was to be dropped off and start at the top of the road and over the course of the evening work our way to the bottom of the road, get picked up by the minibus and then back to our accommodation. The evening went well. We all got very merry, just like Jack. <laughs> Were they that? there? That's what it says. That's a very recent confession. Len <laughs> stayed sober. Some got more merry than others, me included. In fact, I was pretty merry. So when it came to returning at the end of the evening, we got back into the bus or Len's car. I was sitting in the front passenger seat of his lovely new car. And the journey home started really well. Are you ahead of me? <laughs> anyway, there were lots of laughs and everyone was very jolly. Later, I started to feel less jolly. In fact, I started to feel a little queasy. Len noticed oh. this. He'd noticed that I'd gone quiet. He warned me not to be ill in the car. Anyway, the journey continued. I felt worse and I felt worse. I was warned again not to be ill in the car and then it was too late. I told Len to stop, but before he did, I wasn't well all over the dashboard. Oh, no. Now, obviously, Len went mad. We all roared with laughter. Well, uh, <laughs> Len didn't. He was desperately trying to clean it all up. In fairness to me, I was cleaning it up too, says Jezza. Well, the following day, all of us were a little bit hungover. I tried to placate Len, and I paid Len to get his car. Would we say valeted or valeted? What would we valeted. Valeted. No, no. Valid. I go valeted. No, valid is when they drive it off at a hotel. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Like, is that, is that uh, a maybe I just they don't drove it off. Did it come back? I, I paid Len to get his car <laughs> professionally <laughs> cleaned. I went home and I thought very little about the incident. It was just one of those things. Thing is, it wasn't over. Len did get it valeted and valeted and professionally cleaned, and all was fine and peace was restored. Len's wife was talking to him again, and I wasn't in the doghouse, not very much. The incident became a bit of a drinking legend. Until Len went to use the air blowers in his car. Oh, no. <laughs> it was a few weeks later. Oh, no. 
it appeared <laughs> when I wasn't well that some of it had gone into the air blowing system. And when the air was switched on, small dry particles <laughs> blew gracefully <gasps> into the car. Oh. Later we discovered no matter how much cleaning and spraying or washing it took, there was no removal of the smell of me not being well. Whenever the air blows were switched on, the car would fill up with not so fresh air. Poor Len, there was no cleaning of the car that would actually do the job. So after a while, he had to sell it. His pride and joy was ruined for him by me and my recklessness. Always drink responsibly. I just added that in case. I admit I still smile about the whole thing, but equally I do feel quite guilty too. Tell me, Simon, am I worthy of forgiveness? Well, it's a very interesting story. Jezza, thank you very much indeed. Let's find out whether you get forgiveness from Judge Jody, first of all, who never do this kind of thing. Never. I thought it was going to be forgivable, Jezza, um, but then there was more, and I personally don't think that is forgivable. The waft of unwellness it's um, the little little part oh, yeah. it's yeah. so bad it's so bad and i think to be fair your boss should have stopped the car len should have stopped the car and let you be unwell outside the door and he didn't so but no not forgivable sorry judge mark i have to forgive i mean he, he, he what clearly len could see what was going on and decided elected to carry on driving i mean yeah you know, I, I, it's a, a horrible horrible been... thought i spilt milk in a car once and it just smelled like that forever so i can imagine what this must have been like Ugh. but no no he, he was he had he was forewarned and yet he continued to drive forgiven judge jack I think he should have just bought a scented candle. Why, why give, why give the car away? No, or air you freshness. can't have a scented so candle in the car. I suppose in the Can car. I mean, it was a different era. Come on. I mean, oh yes, car fires were ten a penny the, in the those days. The thing is, in confessions, I'm always accused of being too forgiving. As uh, Jody always says, I've forgiven everybody that we've ever come Last in week on. He forgive... And then you call me a pushover. So, so, I was, so you do forgive or not? I forgive. You do. Push oh my man. gosh. I, I can forgive. Well, <laughs> it's it's a it's a very it's interesting tale. We'll we'll. <laughs> find out whether uh, the Scala works, forgive or not, and you can text to 64100, first word is Scala. You can email Simon at scalaradio.co.uk. And if you have a confession of your own, and let's face it, I think you probably do, it's confessions at scalaradio.co.uk.